got him. Got that one. I had to flip him out of that tree right there, out of that brush pile. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Oh my goodness. Look at that fish, folks. <laughs> Little flipping bass. Look at that. Not a bad one. Little one for, for uh, Lake Havasu, but not a bad fish. Um, we just got the Lake Havasu, folks, and uh, today I decided we'll push up the river, do a little flipping, and figure out what these fish are doing. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. We've had a weather pattern come through that's muddied up the water, and uh, they had a lot of rain uh, a few days back, and uh, you can definitely tell it. And uh, it, the, the water's really, really dirty in here. It's hard to see more than a foot, foot and a half down. And uh, normally it's clear as a bell. But uh, we're gonna take through and I decided, well, I tried some reaction a little bit when we first got here this morning, but I'll, I'll do a little flipping, see if we can't, uh, you know, flipping these reeds are a lot of fun and uh, flip it with a small bait or something like that and, and get up in, into the, some of this stuff. I'm using my flipping stick and see if we can't get a fish to bite and uh, catch some fish back up here in the river. The cool thing about being up here in the river is it's not deep water at all. I don't have to worry about fishing 30, 40 foot of water. These fish are used to being in this shallow water, but they do shut off. They turn on and shut off just like any other fish out on the main lake. So what we're gonna do is try to go through here. Maybe, maybe they're a little bit more tighter to cover because of the front that just went through. So if they're tight to cover, no problem. We'll, we'll flip them out of this stuff. Uh, caught that fish in a foot and a half of water right there. So um, you have to be careful when you come up in here, you know, cause it's, uh, you got shallow bays and, and things like that for your motors. You have to be careful. But um, other than that, the, the, lake's, the lake's up. So, I mean, we're, we're able to get into some areas that I don't normally get to fish very often. So we'll come back here and see what we can't do. 17 pound test line, man, you bring out the big stuff. You know, 17, 20 pound test line. I got my flipping stick. I'm throwing a half ounce weight so I can get it in there quick. And uh, just throwing a little Arizona Custom Baits uh, creature bait. And I'll tell you what, that little dude really gets it. It's brand new. Um, Jonathan just started making those and uh, we're gonna try it. It really looks good in the water. It flaps good in the water, everything looks good. So we're gonna throw it, it's small and compact where we can get it into the reeds and let it fall in one spot. Now I do have my weight pegged, which is one of the most important things you can do when you're flipping. Now, I didn't put a bead. A lot of times when I just throw a regular Texas rig, I'll put a bead underneath or something like that. But we went direct with this. I've got a bobber stop underneath where the knot's at so the tungsten doesn't hurt the knot. And then right on top, I've, I've pegged my sinker down just like so to the bait. That way, when the bait falls over some of these reeds, your weight doesn't fall down and your bait's way up here. It all stays compact, it all goes together. And that's very important when you're flipping. You know, you hear of a lot of, of uh, fishermen tell you that uh, I'm flipping, I'm flipping. Um, and I get just as bad. I'll tell you I'm flipping and I'm actually pitching. There's a difference. The difference is, is when you're, when you're actually flipping, you're actually, putting line out on your reel and you're you're taking the line by your hand like this and you're just kind of flipping it in pockets in pockets of the weeds just like so you let it fall down to the bottom you shake it a little bit you can pull it back up and you're reeling close quarters with what you're doing hitting pockets of the weeds whatever you're doing now pitching is more putting it in your hand like this and kind of pitching it out there a little bit letting it fall down in and a lot of guys that's what they do here and you'll see them go down the banks and they're they're actually we call it, a lot of guys just say we're flipping, but you're actually pitching into the reeds. And so if you ever want to know the difference between pitching and flipping, because I've had a lot of guys ask me, well, what's the, what's the pitching thing if that's flipping? And I'm like, nah, actually flipping's when you, when you pull it out and engage the reel, you know, pull the line out like so, and you just pop it in there, pop it in pockets. And I like to do that when I'm in marshy, uh, you know, real weedy areas. But when we're here around reeds like this, I do more of a pitch, and I like to just pitch it out there and poke it in holes like that, and that's, that's pitching. That might help you a little bit when you get out there, but you'll have guys tell you they're flipping, and a lot of times they're probably pitching, and, but, but they call it flipping. <laughs> and I'm just as bad at doing it, but it happens. 
got him. Boy. <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> you thought you were gonna get away from me, didn't you? Come on. You thought you was gonna get away from me. <laughs> Not a big one, but we came out into the current to see if we might be able to get something going a little bit clearer water. And a lot of times you get out in this current, these fish are moving around a lot. You can get up and flip some fish in these reeds and uh, catch some fish on it. Now I'll tell you, it's not easy today for some reason. That front's got them kind of shut down, but if you find little, little deep pockets like this in the reeds, behind the water movement there, you can catch some of these fish. We have flipped a lot. You're gonna do a lot of flipping. You're, you'll catch fish doing it, sometimes some big ones too, but I mean, the thing is, is we came out on this river channel and just started working our way down now. I wanted to get out here on just a little bit of current where I can find some spots I can really get into and uh, find those little areas where the water's pushing and it has a little little stoppage behind the reed or something. And that's usually where they're sitting behind that little eddy thing. And so I'm gonna go down and flip through there and see if we can't get them to bite. It's very slow today, but, and it's a little bit clearer water too out here than it was back in the pocket or something. But we're gonna try both still, but I'll tell you what, one thing that's really important about doing this flipping stuff too, is you gotta be aware of the sun and uh, your shadow. You don't want your shadow on top of the fish up in the front where you're flipping. So you have to position your boat a lot of times to be able to make sure your shadow the way the sun is, is not in the area where you're, where you're flipping. It helps you a lot that way. You're not pre-warning pre the fish you're there. Still trying to figure them out a little bit. <clears throat> I like to get back there right behind where the, where the water's not pushing so hard and that's usually about where they're at. A lot of times when you throw that bait out in this real, in this current like this, it'll just start drifting down and uh, it'll drift right in front of something and those fish will get it. I'm even gonna flip to some rock and things like that to see if I can get them to these little rocky points and behind them and things like that, see if we can get some fish to hit. But I'll tell you, oh man, that felt like a bite. <laughs> you think? <laughs> man, that felt like a bite. <laughs> well, I guess I better put another one of these dog th these things on. Maybe we're gonna do something because I, I stayed back in the pockets where it was real muddy and kind of Nothing going on. We didn't see a whole lot of action. I caught the one fish back there, but now I've decided to come out towards the current just to see to see if I can catch them out here. <clears throat> These fish are constantly moving and they're strong. You'll catch a pound and a half, two pound fish. It'll feel like a three or four on a regular day anywhere else because these fish are pretty strong having to move through this current all the time. Let me put another one on. You know, something to really think about when you're dealing with frontal conditions. It's not like all the fish will just shut off and quit biting. What ends up happening a lot of times when, when this kind of weather front comes through like this is the fish, their strike zone, instead of when the fishing's really good, you know, their strike zone's really big. And so uh, when the weather front comes in, a lot of times that strike zone gets really small. You almost have to hit them on top of the head, which means you have to be a better caster or a better flipper or better pitcher. And you gotta make sure that you hit the areas that you're hitting in the cover a little tighter to cover. Fish will move a little tighter to cover when this happens. When they do that, you can't be missing by a foot a lot of times. You, you gotta be within six inches of the fish. And so, you know, your, your casting is very important. Your, your pitching is very important. Where you place that bait is gonna make the difference of whether you catch a fish or not throughout the day. Just remember that when that, when a front comes through and it, the fishing does get tough, and you'll notice, uh, you'll be out fishing, catching fish, it's all good, and then the front comes through, the wind, all that, the, and, and all of a sudden it just shuts the fishing down. It does shut the fishing down, but what ends up happening really is the fish's strike zone gets a lot smaller. So they're not gonna chase baits a lot. They're gonna, you know, you, if, unless it blows right by them and they can reach out and grab it, you have to be close to the fish. So in saying that, 
when we're doing all this flipping and pitching and stuff around the reeds, you want to make sure that if there's a little pocket there that you hit that pocket. If you don't hit that pocket and you miss it by a foot, that can mean the difference between catching a fish and not catching a fish. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're out here fishing frontal conditions. It's not that you can't catch fish, but it's going to be a little tougher, but it means you got to be a little tougher and be a little bit more precise and that'll help you catch a lot more fish. That's a good one. I'm trying to get him up trees on me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a nice one, folks. Come on. Come on. Just let me touch you. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah! <laughs> Pitch that thing right up in there right in that little spot right there, and there he was. Now that's what we're looking for, some fish like that. I'll tell you. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Get that big old hook out of you. There we go. <laughs> Look at that fish, and they're fat. You better start eating, you guys. I'll tell you what. You know, right in that little, uh, crevice right there between the reeds and the rock. Places like that can be really good to catch fish in for sure. Those, uh, those places are a lot of fun to throw into. Fish like to get in there where it's a little bit protected, get where they have the reeds and the rock right there to hit the crawdads and, and ambush prey. I'll tell you, that's the place for it right there. There again, caught that one on that same bait that I've been throwing, that Arizona custom bait creature bait. That little dude right there is a lot of fun to, to uh, pitch and flip right there. It's just a little and it's real compact. And I'll tell you something else, when these fish shut down like they're doing because of the front, um, a lot of times if you go to a more of a smaller compact bait, you can get them to bite. And uh, that fish right there, like I said, hit it right off the bat. So. That was a good one. Probably hit him right on the head, but I'll take it. But uh, that half ounce really works good, especially working in this current. And uh, so that way when you, when you toss out there, it'll still drift a little bit, but man, it goes right down there to the bottom. This bait's a little bit bulky, but it's still thin enough to where it drops straight down. Works really good. Love that, love that outfit. I'm gonna have to tie on another bait here in a second, but that worked out pretty good. You know, one thing really important to remember when you're doing this kind of pitching like this is to make sure that when you pitch out there that you lower your rod tip as the bait falls where you threw it until it falls to the bottom and then pick it back up. A lot of people take and they throw out there and they leave their rod high all the time and what ends up happening is where you tossed, the bait comes back to you a little bit and you miss the spot where you were trying to hit. So it's very important that when you're doing this kind of fishing, that you bring your rod tip down with the bait. And I'll tell you what, when you're fishing a little bit deeper stuff, like four or five foot, six foot, it allows it, the bait to actually drop right where you threw it. And you have that whole rod, that seven foot rod coming down with it. So you're able to drop it right there where it fell. If you don't do that, a lot of times if you leave your rod tip high, you're not in position to set the hook and your bait's coming right back to you. So unless the fish is real active, you know, a lot of times if you want it to drop right where you threw it, you have to lower your rod tip after you, after the lure hits the water, let it fall till it hits bottom, boom. Now you can start working your bait back up. Okay, that'll help you a bunch.
Something else really important to remember is when you're fishing shallow water, first of all, anytime the water dirties up really bad from the wind and it gets like chocolate milk, a lot of times that'll push fish shallower. One other thing to think about too is if you have a good set of power poles on your boat and you're in that shallow water and it's a little breezy, in order to hit the areas and be, and you can fan cast this little area, I put my power poles down. And that's another reason to use them. A lot of people think, oh, it's just for sight fishing. Believe it or not, there's a lot of stuff we can hit right here. But if the wind's blowing us so fast, we can't really hit it like we need to. We need to slow down. And slowing down means a lot of times dropping those power poles in that shallow water where you can actually stop and, and pop some of these areas. Oh, he's got it. Got him. Got him. Oh, <laughs> it's a small mouth. Hit my Cinco. Hey, maybe we'll, something just jumped right there. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll find something with the Cinco. You know, we've been flipping and pitching these bushes and these reeds to no avail with just a couple of fish. I thought I'd pick the old wacky rig up here and toss on some of this rock, you know. If they're not in the reeds, they might be in the rock. That's my, my theory anyway. So I thought, well, let's give it a try. The water's dingy. The big front came through and uh, it's been tough. Well, we came back out to the main lake. I thought maybe I'd throw on a couple of cages out here. The habitat that they have here, they've done a tremendous job here at Lake Havasu uh, to put a lot of habitat in here. And it's actually made the fishing really much better than it ever was before. And uh, tons of habitat throughout the whole lake. Coming out of the river, flip bite wasn't quite what we wanted it to be today, but uh, with this front blowing through, hey, we caught some fish, had a good time. I hope you learned a little something off that off doing the uh, pitching and flipping, and uh, we'll try to uh, get them again next week. Thanks for joining us on the water. We'll see you. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>